It's a major decision day for President Muhammadu Buhari as he announced the suspension of the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Walter Onoge, today. The President is replacing Justice Walter Onoge with Justice Ibrahim Tanku Muhammad as the CJN in acting capacity. The President swore in the new acting CJN as a ceremony in the Council Chambers at the State House in Abuja. Justice Muhammad hails from Bauchi State and he is the most senior judge in the Supreme Court after Justice Onoge. The President said he acted on the directive of the Code of Conduct Tribunal and the suspension of Justice Onoge is pending the completion of his trial at the CCT. Nigeria is a constitutional democracy and no one must be or be seen to be above the law. Unfortunately, the drama around the trial of the Chief Justice of Nigeria has challenged that pillar of justice in the perception of the ordinary men on the street. For it is certain that no ordinary Nigerian can get the swift and sufficient treatment justice has enjoyed from his subordinates and friars in our judicature. In the midst of all these distracting events, the essential question of whether the accused Chief Justice actually has a case to answer has been lost in the squabble over the form and nature of his trial. This should not be so. If justice cannot be done, and clearly seen to be done, society itself is at risk of the most unimaginable chaos. It is no secret that this government is dissatisfied with the alarm rate in which the Supreme Court of Nigeria under the oversight of Justice Walter has serially set free persons accused of the most dire acts of corruption, often on mere technicalities, and after quite a number of them have been convicted by the trial and applicate courts. Reactions are already trickling in on the suspension of the Chief Justice of Nigeria by the President. The main opposition party, the People's Democratic Party, says it's rejecting the President's action in its entirety, describing it as illegal and unconstitutional. According to the National Publicity Secretary of the party, Kola Ologbodio, the action is impunity that will not be allowed to stand. The party has called on the National Assembly to intervene in the matter and institute every legislative instrument that guides gross misconduct of a sitting President. Well, Mr. President's action is an impunity that will never be allowed to stand in this country. As is a democratic nation, and we are not under the rulership of a singular individual. Our constitution provides the procedure of appointing the Chief Justice of Nigeria and also the measures that need to be taken to oust the Chief Justice of Nigeria. The impunity just committed by the Mr. President is totally, totally unacceptable. And the People's Democratic Party of Nigeria, the People's Democratic Party rejects in totality the action of Mr. President to create two Chief Justices of Nigeria in, for one singular office. It's totally unacceptable and the party will not accept it. We hereby call on the National Assembly to immediately call for a resumption because we are in a moment of crisis in our nation and the National Assembly has to come in to intervene. So we, call, we invite the National Assembly to resume from their leave and come in and they must also institute every legislative instrument that guides gross misconduct of a sitting president. They must invoke those legislative instruments that are used as sanctions against anybody that commits gross action against the Constitution. We also invite the United States of America, we also unite the, we invite the United Kingdom, who just a few days ago or just yesterday told our nation that, and told every citizen of Nigeria that we must allow for a free and fair election. What Mr. President has done is a manifest institutional regain of the 2019 election and this is totally, totally unacceptable. Meanwhile, some southern and middle belt leaders have described the president's action as a constitutional crisis foisted by desperation. In a statement jointly signed by Chief Edwin Clark from the South South, Chief Ayo Adebanjo from the Southwest, and Chief John Wodo from the Southeast, the leaders say they have checked through the constitution and discovered that the president has no power to unilaterally suspend the CJN. The statement says, quote, 
To us, what has been done is to resort to self-help after the Court of Appeal issued an order stopping the trial of the CJN by the CCT, presided over by a man answering charges in court over corruption allegations but still in office, end of quote. The statement adds that the latest action of the president is a clear suspension of the constitution and enthronement of full-blown dictatorship. The group says it rejects the suspension and demands its immediate reversal. But the chairman of the Presidential Advisory Committee on the Fight Against Corruption, Professor Ishe Sage, disagrees with the allegation that the president's action is unconstitutional. Professor Sage, who prefers to share his opinion on the matter based on his experience as a professor of law, insists the president has not erred but acted based on the directive from the CCT. This position is both legally, morally and constitutionally right. From what I've heard, because I'm speaking as an individual now, my private legal opinion. I heard in the news that the removal was a directive from the Code of Conduct Tribunal. So that as far as I'm concerned, if that is the case, the president was carrying out a court order. That's number one. Number two, the suspension could have been carried out in another manner by Section 292, Paragraph 1 of the Constitution, which clearly gives the president the right to remove the chief justice if he is guilty of the breach of the code of conduct. From what I can tell her, this order of the tribunal was made before the court of appeal uh, order. So, I mean, obviously, it cannot affect something that has already been done. Looking at it from a moral angle, with the head of the judiciary, the number one judicial officer of the country, head of the branch of government, is under suspicion of breaking very, very grave provision of the Constitution, for which there's provision that he could lose his job. If he's accused, any self-respecting chief justice would have stepped down pending the prosecution of the whole matter. Meanwhile, the Nigerian Bar Association has rejected and condemned the suspension of the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Walter Onoge. In a press release signed by the NBA president, the association described it as an attempted coup against the Nigerian judiciary and evident suspension of Nigeria's constitution by the executive arm of the federal government. He adds that the action of the executive portends a slide into anarchy and complete destruction of the rule of law and due process. According to the NBA, the president's action amounts to an absolute breach of the Constitution and usurping of the powers of the Senate and the National Judicial Council. We've had other reactions now. The Third Force Movement under the auspices of Nigeria Intervention Movement have given President Muhammadu Buhari seven days to reinstate the Chief Justice of Nigeria or face an unprecedented mass action. The NIM being jointly led by a frontline civil rights activist and legal icon, Dr. Olisa Agbakoba, and the son of former Prime Minister of Nigeria, Sir Tafawa Balewa, views the suspension of the CJN and the swearing in of Justice Tanko Ibrahim Mohammed as a threat to Nigeria's fledging democracy. The group says it is putting President Buhari on strong notice that at the end of seven days from today, if he fails to reinstate the CJN, they will be compelled to mobilize coalition forces of Nigerian civil society and leaders of conscience across the country to confront the Buhari regime with an unprecedented mass action to save Nigeria's democracy. The meeting of the Coalition of Forces Against Civil Dictatorship in Nigeria has been slated to hold on Thursday, January the 31st in Lagos to kickstart a nationwide mobilization to save democracy ahead of the elections. Now, the president's action may have come as a surprise to many, and it's still eliciting reactions from those in legal profession as well as the political space. Our next report gives a background of the process that led to the president's decision. It's yet another tough decision by the president, especially coming at a time the nation is counting down to its general elections. The president's gavel falls on the head of the holder of the stick, who has held it for perhaps 35 years of his career as a judge, up until he rose to become the number one judicial officer in the country. The president's decision today may have come as a rude shock to many, particularly the bar and the bench, and to others who have been monitoring recent developments in the nation's judicial system. 
More importantly, it is coming at a time Justice Onaga's defense team is reveling in the euphoria of an appeal court ruling which stopped the Code of Conduct Bureau from proceeding with the prosecution of the CJN until the jurisdiction of the CCT to hear the matter is determined. It all started on Saturday, January the 12th. The news of the trial of the CJN for alleged failure to declare some of its assets to the CCT broke. But it was met with stiff reactions as many waited for the real prosecution to begin on Monday, January the 14th. The prosecution did begin, but without the CJN appearing in person at the tribunal. He was represented by a retinue of senior lawyers who argued on the jurisdiction of the CCT to try the CJN. In the wisdom of the tribunal or in the ruling of the tribunal, the tribunal of the tribunal, the tribunal said all those rulings constitute a nullity. Thereafter, other suits followed. One in the High Court, another in the Industrial Court, and then the Appeal Court, all challenging the position of the CCT to prosecute the CJN. But now, the President's decision may have just opened another chapter in the matter, since he claims to be acting on the order from the CCT, asking the CJN to step aside. Yet, there are mind-boggling questions to be answered on the matter. The answers to these questions are best proffered by those who truly understand the law and its application. Now let's turn our attention to other legal matters that came up in different courts across the country today. A federal capital territory high court has set up a three-member panel to resolve the logjam arising from the trial of former National Security Advisor Colonel Sambo Dasuki for alleged money laundering. The three-member panel, headed by Justice Hussein Baba Yusuf, is to find a way forward. Colonel Dasuki, who had been in detention of the State Security Service since December 2015, despite about six court orders that granted him bail, had written to the Federal High Court saying he would no longer appear for trial in protest against violation of court orders by the Federal Government, which put him on trial. In the letter, Colonel Dasuki said the Federal Government has lost both moral and legal right to continue to prosecute him, having deliberately violated valid court orders. Apart from Justice Baba Yusuf, who is presiding, other members of the panel are Justice Valentine Ashri and Justice Mary Ann Aneni, both judges of the FCT High Court. Trial has been adjourned to February the 19th, 2019.